Folks, I want to begin with uh, just reading of uh, scripture as we've been reading through Psalms, uh, you know, Sunday morning, but I'm not going to read the whole um, chapter of Psalms 105. I'm going to skip some verses, um, and I hate doing that, but anyway, just if you'd follow along with me. The psalmist begins with, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among, his, among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders, glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his wonders which he has done, his marvels and the judgments uttered by his mouth. O seed of, Ezra, uh, of Abraham, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. Then he confirmed it to Jacob for a statue to Israel in an everlasting covenant. And then I'm going to jump to verse 15. He goes on to say, Do not touch my anointed ones. This is a warning that God gives. Verse 15, do not touch my anointed ones, and to my prophets do no harm. And then I'm going to jump after reading those two verses to the end of this uh, portion of scripture. He continues on to say, verse 37 of Psalms 105, then he brought them out with silver and gold. And among his tribes there was not one who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the dread of them had fallen upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and a fire to illumine by night. They asked and he brought quail, and he satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rocks and water flowed out. It ran in the dry places like a river, for he remembered his holy word with Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy, his chosen with a joyful shout. He gave them also the land of the nations, that they might take possession of the fruits of the prophet's labor, so that they might keep his statue and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. As we read the portion of scripture, on uh, the bulletin of July uh, 26th, 2020, um, there was a picture that uh, Charlotte put on the front of the bulletin. It's uh, almost like a cartoon. There are people looking at uh, a map of worldly wisdom according to our map. It's okay to go this way. There's a guy who takes the word of God. He says, I'm following a different map. Life with God, life without God. And then she writes in front of that bulletin, obedience to God is an expression of our love for God. There's just so many uh, things that uh, that one bulletin, um, Charlotte gives me a message every Sunday with the bulletin, what she does. And she wrote here uh, a poem by um, Deborah N. Let me be obedient. Listen to what uh, this poem says. Lord, let me be obedient to your spirit always true. Let me seek and follow only after him and you. Help me to be filled with the spirit's power so I may be guided my every waking hour. Lord, let me be faithful in my daily walk. Let it be your words in my daily talk. Help me to trust you with all my heart and soul so that you can be the one always in control. Lord, let me be obedient. Help me to trust you fully. For when left on my own, I am defiant and unruly. Again, you can see the call to obedience in the bulletin. The message was just two other uh, bulletin, and I kept it because I have to refer to it quite often for my own life. Today, we want to finish the message we had started. Remember, we had three uh, messages that came from the chapter of Exodus chapter 12, 
the Passover preparation, verses 1 to 13, redemption plan, and then the purpose of the Passover, uh, verses uh, 14 to 28 of Exodus 12, that was message number two, redemption provided. And then this morning I want to finish the third part of the message. We started it but never got to finish it. The power of the Passover, Exodus 12, 29 to 51. And in that uh, message, I put the caption, Redemption Secured. Um, there's nothing more important. As you can look at the world around us, and you begin to think about this word security. It's become such an important word. We all need security. We all want security. We all know security is necessary because without security, insecurity causes a lot of pain and sorrow. So this morning, Redemption secured the power of the Passover. I'm just going to give my outline very quickly and then get back to the part of the message that I want to finish uh, with us this week. And may God just speak to your hearts as you hear the truth from God's word. We begin with Exodus uh, chapter 12, verses 29 to 51, the power of the Passover. We begin with God's judgment on Egypt. Verse 29, that is the 10th plague. At midnight, you know, God struck all the firstborn, and the very night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, go, leave my land, uh, and bless me. Secondly, God's power over all the gods of Egypt, verses 30 and 32, chains broken and people are set free. What happened is, all the gods of Egypt, all the animals that they consider to be gods, the frog, and you name it, they were all defeated by the God of heaven. By the one who claims I am who I am, the Lord himself. And again, I just made a quick reference. Chains broken, people are set free. The children of Israel were freed by the Egyptians the night God brought judgment on the Egyptians. And just like the time when Jesus Christ died on the cross and you come to the cross and you ask him to forgive you and you accept the gift of salvation he has brought, those, that's the time when chains are broken and people are set free. Thirdly, we talked about God's people in entirety. The exit in entirety, the exit in haste, verses 33 to 39. And I wanted to just emphasize the fact, when God rescues us from the land of bondage and sin, we should be wasting time because salvation is of such utmost importance. Escape, escape quickly from the land of bondage and sin. And I looked at that from verses 33 to 38, uh, to 39. And then, fourthly, God's protection over his people in Egypt. God's protection over his people in Egypt. Remember, the writer will mention to us from verses 40 to 42 that they were in the land of Egypt for 430 years. Even though some of the Jews had begun to look over to the idol worship of the Egyptians and maybe have taken some of those idols because there was a quiet time. God never abandoned his people. With that, I want us to know as Christians that just like they needed to keep ready like a runner to take off, you and I need to be ready in season and out of season, always trusting in the Lord and keeping ready for the day he calls us to himself. Fifthly, we look at the power of the Passover, redemption secured. This is the last point. And, that, and that's what I want to focus on a little bit today as we bring this message to a close. The power of the Passover, redemption secured. First, let me bring this to your heart and to, my, to your mind. Everyone must come into a covenant relationship. What do I mean by that? Well, this is the text I'm going to read. 
because there are a few things I want to emphasize uh, in this last point that were not uh, finished last week. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 43, I want to read the text. Verse 43, And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the statue of the Passover. No foreigner shall eat of it. No foreigner shall eat of it. Verse 44, But every slave that is bought for money may eat of it after you have circumcised him. No foreigner or hired worker may eat of it. Repetition, verse 45. Verse 46. It shall be eaten in one house, and you shall not take any of the flesh outside the house, and you shall not break any of its bones. Talking about the lamb that was sacrificed at that Passover. Verse 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. If a stranger shall sojourn with you, and would keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, that he may come near and keep it. He shall be as a native of the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. There shall be one law for the native, and one for the stranger who sojourns among you. Verse 50, all the people of Israel did just as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. The last verse 51, and on that very day, the Lord brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their hosts. What is so important here? Remember I said, everyone must come into a covenant relationship. Well, the fact was, there were people who attached themselves to, uh, to the uh, nation of Israel. They had seen all the miracles and the devastation God brought on the land of Egypt. They were not stupid. They, they were not naive. They realized there is a true God in heaven. So guess what? They jumped for security in with the Jewish nation. But guess what? They had to come into a covenant relationship with God. You know, today I hear even pastors saying, well, it doesn't matter if people really uh, stand up and claim uh, and repent of their sins and uh, ask Jesus into their hearts. And, you know, as long as they come to church and they hear the word and they say, yes, I believe in God, that is good enough. Can I say to you, absolutely no. It doesn't work that way. When I went to the United States of America, first I went as a student and then I went as a pastor. Guess what? I could have said, well, I agree with the American way of life and I agree with the American Constitution. Uh, that's all right. No problem for me. Guess what? I would not be allowed in that country. When I entered that country, I had to obey the law of that land. That means I had to come under the law of the United States of America to live there, to work there. Otherwise, I would have not been accepted. At the border, I was asked a very clear question. Are you willing to abide by the law of this land as you come and participate in this community? And I said, yes. Now, isn't it amazing? Today, in the new world, uh, new way of doing things, we really don't care if somebody will make an outward profession of faith, we will just assume they come to church, they seem to uh, love the singing, they love the service, they love the people in the church, they are fine. Can I say to you, no, you have not entered into a covenant relationship. And God here will emphasize that. Verse 43, this is the statue of the Passover, no, no foreigner shall eat of it. You see, now you said, what's the transition from there to what you're saying. Well, I want to make that clear how we go from the Old Testament to the New Testament and make application. 